I'm Karen, and I've been hiking around southeastern Arizona a little bit for the last 15 years and a whole lot since 2020. Recently, it's been a little too hot for me to get out on the trails much, so today, instead of hiking, I'm going to tell you about the 10 essentials I bring along with me on my day hikes. If you're nervous about going out for your first hike, or you've been on a few hikes and you want to up your game, stick around, and by the end of the video, I think you'll be ready to have fun and stay safe on your day hikes. The first essential is navigation. I always bring a paper map with me on a hike, and I spend a few minutes reviewing it before I leave home to figure out where the trailhead is and what route I'm going to take. In addition to my paper map, I download a map onto my phone, or I confirm that I have one on my Garmin inReach. Don't wait until you get into a canyon and then realize that you have no cell service. And now, I'm not sure which way to go. Download the map before you leave home. And remember, a Garmin inReach or other similar device is just a brick in your backpack if you don't know how to use it. If you use an app or an electronic device, practice it with it on a walks around your neighborhood until you're comfortable using it. My second tip is letting someone know where you're going to be and when you're going to be back. And if you don't have someone who you can leave this information with, it's a good idea to leave a note on your windshield with your departure time and the trail that you're taking. Or if there's a log at the trailhead, go ahead and sign in there. This will ensure someone will come looking for you if you run into a serious problem. I made a wrong turn somewhere. As important as my first two tips are, my third essential, water, is critical. A lot of hiking sites suggest that you bring a liter of water for every two hours you'll be hiking. After you calculate how much you'll need to bring with you, add an extra liter of water just in case. And then when you're hiking and you notice that half your water is gone, it's time to turn around and head back. Yes, even if you haven't made it to the destination you had in mind, turn around and try to hike another day. The conditions might be better another time, or you'll have more water with you next time. There are lots of rescues and even deaths of hikers every year in Arizona due to dehydration and heat, so bringing extra water is truly your insurance against death. As a backup, I keep a water filter in my pack just in case of an emergency, but that filter won't do you a bit of good if you're hiking where there is no water. Fourth is sun protection. In Arizona, the UV index is often 9 or above. UV simply stands for ultraviolet, which measures the strength of sunburn producing UV rays. Essentially, on a sunny day in Arizona, you can generally assume it will be 9 or above, which means very high or extreme risk of harm to your skin or to your eyes if you're unprotected. At any rate, sun protection doesn't just mean sunscreen. It means clothing that protects you from the sun, sunglasses for your eyes, hats, buffs or bandanas can help protect your neck, and they're great because they can double as a napkin or even a sweatband. Protect your skin now so you don't have to have a dermatologist scrape off that damage when you're older. My fifth essential is a first aid slash emergency kit. In it, I have a multi-tool, matches and lighter, pain relievers, an emergency blanket, a light that I can clip onto my hat, duct tape, flagging tape, and a few other odds and ends. You can always buy emergency kits that come in cool packages, but I think it's cheaper to put together my own kit and I don't end up with a lot of extra stuff that I don't need. A sixth tip for day hiking is wearing the right clothes and shoes. Tennis shoes are just fine when you're on a, a flat dirt trail, but once you start heading up into rocky or steep terrain, you'll want to look at trail runners or hiking boots with good tread for better grip. When you're in an area where the temperature can swing from 30 or 40 degrees within a day, like Arizona, dress in layers that you can take off or put on so that you can stay cool or warm enough and consider keeping a puffy or rain jacket and a pair of gloves in the bottom of your pack. They don't weigh much. You'll really appreciate that they're there when you need them. And I'm sure I don't have to tell you to check the weather before you head out. Is a snack an essential? If you're going out for a short hike, an hour or two, of course you don't have to bring food with you. But just like keeping an extra jacket in the bottom of your pack is a good idea, it's also a good idea to keep some sort of long-lasting wrapped snack, like a power bar, in your backpack just in case you're on the trail longer than you expected. And Joe and I like to bring along lunch when we're out on the trail for a few hours. Now you want to be elegant, so keep your finger up. There you go. Yep. It's a nice way to take a break and enjoy the time and the view together. The eighth essential I carry with me when I hike is bear spray. I've never needed to use my bear spray, but on every hike, I practice at least once pulling it out of its holster, slipping off the safety latch, and getting ready to spray it. 
any safety device you carry with you is only as helpful as your ability to use it correctly. My ninth tip is probably a woman-only essential, a pee rag. If you use a pee rag, just let it dry, which, which it'll do in a minute or two in Arizona. If you use toilet paper, bring an extra plastic bag to put your toilet paper in there after you've used it. Don't leave toilet paper on the trail. There's no magic toilet paper fairy that comes and picks it up after you're gone. It stays there a long time. If you can carry toilet paper in with you, you can carry it out with you. As my 10th essential, on all but the flattest trails, I bring along hiking poles. It's nice to have an extra bit of help with balance and support when a trail is steep or rocky, or if I have to go across a creek. And when I find myself off trail, it's good to have a long stick to poke around underneath a log or around rocks to make sure there's no rattler under there whose nap I'm about to interrupt. And finally, a bonus tip for those of you who managed to stick around for all this time to the end. Look up and look around while you're out. Take a photo of a tree or a flower so that you can look up the name later. Enjoy the view and the breeze. You can get as much enjoyment out of a short one mile hike as a 15 mile hike. It's all about the experience you have along the way, so make it a good one. And then for the most important step, drive to a trailhead and take a hike. In future videos, I'll be getting into more detail on each of these tips, so be sure to subscribe in order to learn more, so you can be more prepared and more comfortable out there on the trails. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. And I'll see you on the next hike.